All right, this is Hubble. Let's take a deep dive and have a look at the future of streaming according to the Foxtel group. Now, I've installed the Hubble box, the little puck, the little set-top box. They just call it Hubble. There is also a actual TV you'll be able to buy at Harvey Norman and direct from Hubble called Hubble Glass. I'll have a look at that in the weeks ahead. So I've hooked Hubble up to a Samsung TV here and it's on HDMI 1. Obviously, some people say that's illogical because the TV has all these apps built in, but that's exactly, I guess, Hubble's point. They, they don't say specifically the market is anyone in particular, but they want to have a part of that streaming market, and they think that this is a refreshed look at the way streaming can be done, and I'll show you why. Let's have a look at the interface here. So this is Hubble as we scroll up and down. And the core difference here is it's not primarily about the apps because the apps aren't the number one thing. The apps are here uh, on the second row. It's all about content. What Hubble wants you to do is see content from everywhere. So instead of going, hey, what should I watch right now? Opening Netflix, spending five minutes, finding nothing. Opening Amazon, spending five minutes, finding nothing, or whatever it might be. You come here and you see what's happening across all the different platforms. So let's talk about trending, for example. Rather than opening up Netflix and seeing what's trending, opening up Stan and seeing what's trending, I open up my TV, I look at Hubble, I see what's trending on a whole range of platforms, including Australian free-to-air platform. So I can see what's trending on SBS On Demand. I can see what's trending on Prime Video, on 7 Plus, uh, on a range of different platforms. And of course, I can launch any of them directly from there. Now, when you set up the box, it asks you first and foremost to log into all of the free-to-air apps. And I'll get to the main reason why that is, but it does mean that when we find something on a free-to-air app like ABC iView here, we theoretically just click it and it launches directly into that content within the app, which is obviously a great way to find and discover content. But that's not new. Plenty of boxes do that. The Google Chromecast does that. You know, So again, not revolutionary. Um, in fact, Google Chromecast does a lot of this as well, showing you things. I think, personally, in my 24-hour viewing of this product, and the reason I'm doing this video so early in the review process is because they're already selling it. People are receiving these already as retail customers. Um, I think Google Chromecast, or Chromecast with Google TV, does a better job because it's more personalized. It's about me and what I watch. It's showing me content based on my viewing habits. So that is something that needs to come to Hubble and it needs to come much faster than perhaps is planned. Um, the big thing that you get on Hubble is live TV. Now you can plug an antenna into the box or in a large number of cases now, you have a TV where there is no antenna, that's the reason you'd log on to 9 Now, 7 Plus, 10 Play, SBS On Demand and ABC iView because then you can get the free-to-air channels. Now, again, people will say, oh, but I've got uh, ABC iView on my TV which doesn't have an antenna and I can watch live TV there. Okay, so let's open ABC iView. Okay, we want to watch the ABC. Um, so we open the app and you could do this on Chromecast on any other uh, platform, no problems at all. Um, it's certainly not a snappy platform, I would say, from Hubble. Um, I haven't launched this app before, so maybe that's the reason. But then I've got to, okay, I've launched it, I had to wait, now I've got to go down to the live stream and then I click to go. So that's the process of launching a live stream. It's the same with Nine Now. So here in the office, for example, um, universal remote, by the way, it pairs with your um, TV, so you can control the volume. Um, so here in, in my office, no antenna, on, on a couple of different TVs, I launched the Nine Now app, I scroll down one, I click, so it's three clicks, launch, down, and go, basically, is to get the live stream for Channel 9. So the difference here, and this is a game changer for Hubble is, in the TV guide, there's an actual TV guide here, right? Standard looking TV guide, EPG, uh, all channels. We've got channels that are on Foxtel, so through Binge, through Lifestyle, through KO, there are a bunch of channels. But when we scroll down now here, and I go, oh, Channel 9, the Today Show, I click on that, and what it's now doing is it's going, right, going into the Nine Now stream, and it's grabbing the live stream, and it's presenting it here to me as a live channel. Works pretty bloody well. If I, if I go down two channels, you know, scrolling down through the channels, Channel 7, it'll launch now. You see it's kind of fetching the feed. 
and there we go. We've got uh, we've got Sunrise. If we now go down, let's go down to the uh, SBS. Um, it's basically like changing channels, just a bit slower, which is totally fine by my books because you're getting the live feed, you're getting it on an antenna. Now, a problem with that is localization. Now, if we scroll down to where the multi-channels are, and there are a bunch of the multi-channels, 7 Mate, 9 Life, 9 Gem, there isn't 9 Rush, so there's definitely some multi-channels missing. Um, but I put the postcode, so when you set it up, you say, what's your postcode? I set the postcode for this for Griffith in regional New South Wales. Griffith has its own channels, regional channels, 7 Griffith, 9 Wagga, all those kind of things, right? 10 in Griffith. If we go down to 9 Wagga and we click uh, Watch Now, uh, it has no content. So there's there's no Nine Wagga, no programs are currently being broadcast on this channel. So there are no regional feeds for the free-to-air networks. Um, and here's a big kicker. These are IPTV channels. And I can tell you right now, let me load something random here while we talk about it. I can tell you right now that um, the, there are things that will not be available uh, I'm not going to load any content because it'll, I'll get copyright strikes. There will things that are not available on your live feed. So let's say you're an AFL fan. You don't have KO. You want to watch the AFL. It's on Channel 7. With a TV with an antenna, you turn it on, you watch the AFL. With the 7 Plus app, there's no AFL because they don't have the digital rights to the AFL. So there's not going to be AFL via free-to-air on this box. It's just important to be clear about that because people will expect the way it's sold that it's free-to-air TV, but it's the internet version of free-to-air TV. So you do have all the apps you can launch. Interestingly for something like KO, it is, it's a KO app within Hubble. They, it is not the standard KO app, frankly, at all. Um, it do, it's not personalized in any way. It's not my normal KO login. It doesn't show me all the Formula One stuff. It's showing me I would never see this stuff. Uh, like if I launch KO on a smart TV or in the app, I don't see any of this footy stuff. I'm a rev head. That's all I see is rev head stuff. Um, so the apps do exist, uh, but I think Hubble would prefer that you're just really scrolling for content and finding them in environments like genres. So the big example here is sport, and this is where the future of Hubble it has huge potential. If we come into this sport hub as opposed to the KO app, what we will see here uh, is live sport from Stan, from Optus Sport and from KO all together. So during the Olympics this year, if, you've, if you're a Stan sport subscriber, you'll see the, the live feeds from the Olympics alongside, you know, baseball games coming through KO, alongside English Premier League games on Optus Sport, theoretically one click away. Um, which is just fantastic. That's going to be an awesome hub for sport. You're obviously going to need all of those subscriptions to do that. Um, but basically, you know, you look at a, a kids genre, for example, and what we see here is kids content from everywhere in streaming. So we've got Netflix kids content, we've got binge kids content, we've got Disney, we've got Prime, you know, it's all there, ABC iView. So this is a, a place for a genre of content, in this case kids, across all the different streaming platforms. And what this will do, whether it's kids content or random TV series, is it'll fill the gaps and find the content for you. So let's say you're watching a TV show, Lost, uh, and you watch season one. Let's say season one's on Amazon Prime. Don't ignore the fact that it's not true. Season one, season two, season three, but season four is not on Amazon Prime. What Hubble's doing is they're bringing together all of the metadata and all the information they have about where shows are. And if you finish season three and you want to watch episode one, season four, and it's on Paramount, it'll just load Paramount for you. It'll just play it there. Of course, it, it ensures that you, it requires that you have that subscription, but it will do all that for you. So that concept, brilliant. Again, very hard to demonstrate, but for people that have all the streaming services, pretty, pretty outstanding stuff. Now, one of the core things about Hubble is the bringing it all together. And there's a benefit to that in what they call stack and save. Now, right down the very bottom of this Hubble interface, which is all just different genres and different things. But let's go all the way down the bottom to my account. Now, my account is where you manage, obviously, your Hubble account. 
The basic account stuff is probably better managed on your website browser. But here on the Smart TV interface, you can manage your account and your subscriptions. And gee whiz, it takes a while to load some stuff. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna blame the, uh, the internet for that. But yeah, this is where you manage your subscriptions. So here, we can choose what subscriptions we have and we can see at a glance how much they cost. Honestly, this is the potential game changer. But Optus have this through Optus Subhub. It's just only available kind of on, in the Optus app. So this is in your smart TV, it's in your face. And you can see here, it tells me what I'm paying per month, $73 a month. I've got Flash, I've got KO, I've got Binge, I've got Disney. I can add Netflix by simply clicking a button. I can add Lifestyle by simply clicking a button. But I can't add Stan, I can't add Prime, I can't add Paramount. I, we don't know which ones of those are going to be integrated here or not. This system is, is great, but it truly is game changing if it has all those services at the touch of a button with a total so that we can give and take some services over the course of different months. And you want to be able to turn them on and turn them off. Uh, for example, Disney Plus, I added and then I subtract, uh, subtracted. Now I'm told uh, through this, when you add a service like Disney, and that's why I'm now in limbo because I added it and then removed it because I thought I was adding a second account. When you add Disney or Netflix, it adds it to your Hubble account and then you get an email, which says you'll get another email from those services allowing you to migrate your account over. So if you've got an existing Disney or Netflix account, you'd be able to bring it into your Hubble account and do the billing here. Problem? After the password sharing crackdown that Netflix had, uh, I am now paying for an extra member of my family, which is my mother-in-law and father-in-law. I can't bring that account over here. So if I was to bring my Netflix account into Hubble, they would lose that extra member account. So it's not the full Netflix package. Now that may be a, mon a small part of the Netflix population, but it's, it's a reason I can't add it, which means I can't add Netflix here, which means I can't add another app and get a bigger credit. This is the big thing about Hubble. You add three apps, you get a $5 credit. You add four apps, you get a $10 credit. You add five apps, you get a $15 credit. I've got 15 apps. I want the full credit, right? But I can't add my Netflix because I'm gonna lose that extra family member. If I add Lifestyle, sure, I get a five, an extra $5 credit, but then I'm paying three bucks a month for Lifestyle. And I believe, I understand that content from Binge is leaving Binge to go into what is this new app lifestyle. So you may need to add that $8 a month to your subscription. I think Binge is changing. There'll be less content on Binge, not a lot, but less content. And that will appear on Lifestyle. So they're kind of adding another layer to your subscription. They are continuing to take. But I love, love the idea of a single screen that shows me what I'm paying per month. So that is a game changer, that is good. There are other services that do it. Fetch has a, a, that in, in a small way and, and I think it could be brought forward in their interface. Optus have that through Subhub. Um, but broadly, this is about bringing content to the front. Uh, on this top rail, by the way, when you go right, you see recommended content. When you go left, you see recent things you've done. So you'll see here, these are the things that I looked at while I was recording this video. Uh, we looked at the ABC app, we looked at the Nine View, we looked at SBS, we looked at, we tried to load Wagga, and we looked at Discovery. So it remembers that. That's about as personal as Hubble gets. It's $99. If you've got a Google TV, a Fetch, a Fire Stick, or a great smart TV, it's not about rushing out and doing this. If your only streaming services are Foxtel ones, Binge, KO, um, those kind of things, then it's probably worth getting one just for the saving, just for the stack and save concept. Uh, but I, I do wonder who the market is for this. I'm still torn on that. I've spoken to plenty of people over the last year or so wanting to get rid of Foxtel, but they're worried about live TV. This plugs that gap. Now, I think Fetch will respond pretty, pretty aggressively to this with live TV via the internet. They'll just... I think be a bit more open about the fact that it has its limitations uh, so that people know that they're not gonna get regional content, they're not gonna get all content, there's certain things that simply aren't available on stream. But at a, as a first look, it's pretty good. I My biggest gripe is this. When you don't 
own a service. So if you're not subscribed to something. So for example, when I went to Apple TV Plus, the first time I used it, it's like, oh, accept the free trial now. I'm like, okay. And then, and then I don't want a free trial. I've already got Apple TV. It took me a while to work out how to bring my login in. So let's just assume you get over all that. And we're just talking about services that you don't have an account for, don't have a login to. And you see it here on the app somewhere, right? So you're scrolling through and you're like, oh, I really want to watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Amazon Prime. Great idea. But we don't have Amazon Prime. I don't, ha I don't have a subscription. I do, but I don't have, Hubble doesn't know that. I don't have a subscription. I haven't added it to, to the Hubble app because you can't. So I'm on the Hubble. I want to watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I click watch. But I don't have an account. So what happens? This to me is where I think that if this was to be the truly game-changing wall-in-one box, when I click watch with Prime and start my 30-day trial, it should take me into that My Account page of Hubble and go, do you want to add this now? It's going to cost you this much and this is how much your total bill is going to be. That's what should happen, right? Let's do it. Let's, oh, sign in. Plus, okay, we have already signed in. I'm on Hubble, right? Let's sign in. So where's it taking me? To Amazon. I've got to sign in and create an Amazon account. I get it. That's how you create accounts. It's fine. But that's how everyone else does it. I can do that on Google Chromecast. I can do that on Fetch. I can do that on a smart TV. What's revolutionary about this? The only truly revolutionary thing here is free TV without an aerial with some caveats. Broadly though, I think it's pretty bloody awesome. I think they've done a great job. Uh, I think it's a great set-top box for streaming services. I think it's great that you can save money on Stack and Save. But I think it falls short of being the truly revolutionary service that it could promise to be. And I think perhaps we're, we're maybe a year or two away from all of those streaming companies accepting that they do need to make their login, their billing and their other service APIs available to companies like Hubble and Optus Subhub and Fetch and other independents to manage that. Like I think about, you know the app Just Watch, which allows you to find content? Honestly, their business model has to be to become that central subscription planning service. So you've got one independent app that you go, no, nope, don't want that this month, do want that this month, and you turn things on and off. That's what Hubble could be. But if that's the game changer, just make it an app. Don't why are we building boxes and TVs? Anyway, that's my first look at Hubble. I've had it 36 hours. Um, I'm sure I'll discover more. Um, it's a pretty slick interface. It's a bit laggy. Um, it has some restrictions in how uh, fantastic it is in terms of streaming, bringing streaming together. It also has some great advantages in the way it makes all content visible to you at any one time. I'll leave it to you to make the judgment. That's the remote if you want to have a look at it. So basically uh, standard remote from the Comcast group, but uh, yeah, all about streaming and obviously prioritizing KO, Binge and Netflix as you know, their two services and one of the most popular. And does, by the way, voice control, I'll show you one fun thing. Ready? This is voice control. Where's my remote control? It's in your hand. I'll pay that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, voice control works for, for pretty much everything you want. So uh, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, drive to survive. Launches straight into Netflix, which is pretty bloody good. Um, I wonder how it will handle a more generic request like Formula One. Takes me into, into Hubble. Hubble's sport or KO. So pretty cool. And the voice I think will be one of the things I'll test out a little bit more in a more detailed review. Plus I'll have the Hubble Glass TV. I'll set that up at home where I don't have an antenna as well. Um, yeah, interesting times for streaming in Australia. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.